Hey everybody, it's Nate and Steph from Explorers.life. We teach people how to build DIY campers. And this video is episode number four in a new series of videos where we will be showing you step-by-step step from the ground up how we're upfitting our brand new Ford Transit. Now, in the last video, we hopped up into the back of the van with a bunch of tape and sticky notes and planned out the interior of this van. And in this video, we're going to start planning all of our 12 volt, 24 volt, and 120 volt branch circuits so that we know that where all of our stuff, like our lights and our fans and our outlets and stuff like that will go and proper wire sizes to wire them all together. Now I'm gonna hop into Microsoft Visio for the first part of this episode and show you how I'm going to map everything in the van out. And then Steph is going to come down and help me measure everything out. And then we'll wrap up this video by putting all of that information into the Explorus Life wire sizing calculator to determine what sizes of wire that we need to be using for all of those circuits. Now, let's get started. Now I use Microsoft Visio for all of the diagrams you find on Explorer's Life, and this one is no exception. So I have a brand new file right here. Now I'm not going to be teaching you how to use Visio, but more so the process of how it all comes together. This diagram is going to be a rough draft and should be considered a work in progress throughout this build as we refine the electrical system and add components. Rough drafts are just that rough, so don't expect it to be pretty by the end of this episode. This stuff takes time. By the end of this build, I'll have this diagram and most of the parts list and kits for the entire electrical system available to you, so check out the video description and first comment below for more info on that as I make it available. I started out with a handful of rectangles. The top one represents the ceiling, the middle one represents the front of the van, and the left and right rectangles represent the driver's side and the passenger side of the van, respectively. Picture this diagram as if you were looking into the van from the back doors. Next, I'm going to place all of the components around the van in roughly the same location that they will actually be in the van. I already had some component placeholders, so I just dragged and dropped them into place. The component placeholders aren't really anything fancy, they're just boxes with the component label, the operating voltage, and the operating amperage on them. I was able to find the operating amperages by simply looking in the user manual or the data sheet of whatever component I was looking at, and these can pretty much always just be found online. Now if you're trying to do some planning like this for your own camper, the best piece of advice I can offer is to take your time, but don't get analysis paralysis. Remember, this is just a rough draft and you can move these boxes around once you get into the van and start to actually see where things are going. You'll see us do this in the upcoming episodes of this series and I can pretty much guarantee you that this diagram will look different by the time all of the electrical is installed. Next I added the rear of the van as I had a few components to install back there like some auxiliary exterior lighting. Now I'm definitely going to put those on a switch, but I might also make it so that those come on automatically when the reverse lights come on, which I think would be pretty cool. We'll see though. Let me know if you think that's a good idea or not. Next I started drawing wire paths. Now I actually only drew a few wire runs to give me a quick idea of which devices and outlets will be on each circuit. I didn't draw all of the wire runs just yet as I know that the devices are going to change and I also know that I'm going to be incorporating relay blocks or some kind of relay based switch panel to control all the lights and other devices that need to be turned off and on. Trying to draw those in right now would require too much rework for me in the future. Now if you're trying to do this for your own camper, I would actually just recommend trying to draw out as much of the wiring runs as you can because this might help you visualize how all of this will look, but keep in the back of your mind that these things will change and know that you can build this diagram in stages. Even planning this out on a circuit by circuit basis will be helpful. You'll see us do that in the upcoming videos as well. Next I made a spreadsheet and put down all of my different circuits. I'll be installing two separate 12 volt fuse blocks in this van to try to keep the wire runs as short as possible and to minimize the number of wires that have to go laterally across the ceiling or floor since our Battleborn battery bank will be positioned on the driver's side of the van. I divided this spreadsheet up into passenger side circuits and driver side circuits, then I listed out where the circuits would be going and what components they were going to be for. Some of these circuits are for auxiliary power circuits, and that just means that I plan to have a pluggable outlet in the wall of the van that can be connected to, 
whatever we need it to. It might be a refrigerator or it might be a light, who knows. The upper switched power circuits will also be plugs in the walls that will be powered by switches for things like under cabinet lighting that can be connected and disconnected as needed if we want to uninstall the cabinet modules. Remember, one of the three main goals of this van is to make it modular so that most of this furniture can be removed as needed. Now this part was simply using a tape measure to measure approximately how far it was going to be from the fuse block to the furthest load in each circuit, and putting that information into the spreadsheet. It's pretty important to think about where the wires will run when doing this so that all of the wires can also be bundled together. Next I went back to the computer and put the amperage for each circuit into the spreadsheet. For each specific device I put it as its listed amperage. For every circuit that doesn't have a defined amperage, like multiple 12 volt outlets for example, I just put those circuits as 15 amp circuits. So just like in your house, you may have five different plugins around your bedroom, each with two outlets on it, each rated for 15 amps. But all of those outlets are all combined on the same 15 or 20 amp circuit. You can use as many outlets as you need to at the same time, but you just can't exceed the total circuit amperage. Same principle here, we just won't be able to pull more than 15 amps from any one of these circuits, which is more than enough for what we'll be using any of them for. The lengths of wire runs in the 12 volt DC circuits matters quite a bit. The longer the run, the bigger the wire needs to be, so the length of both the positive and negative wires needs to be accounted for. So I just multiplied everything on the one way length column by two to get the total length of the conductors in each circuit. Next I made two columns, a column for the recommended wire size at 3% voltage drop and a recommended wire size at 10% voltage drop. ABYC recommends no more than 3% voltage drop for all critical branch circuit loads and no more than 10% voltage drop for all non-critical branch circuit loads. We don't really have any circuits that would be considered critical loads because if for example, our overhead lights went out, that really wouldn't put us in any kind of risk to our health or safety, like if the bilge pump lost power on a boat or something like that. So next I'm just going to go through each of these circuits, putting the numbers into the Explorus Life wire sizing calculator for both the 3% column and the 10% column, using the voltage drop slider in the calculator to go back and forth between the two. Next I made another column for consolidated wire sizes, so that I could come up with a more concrete plan for the actual size of wire I was going to use. Now I wanted to err on the side closer to 3% voltage drop, just because it's always better to round wires to the next biggest wire size within reason. But for some of the circuits recommending 6 and 8 gauge wire, I'm actually going to round those back down to 10 gauge, because the fuse blocks that we're using have a max wire size of 10 gauge but anywhere in between those two values of 3 and 10% voltage drop is allowed. The two circuits at the bottom are exceptions. The Nomadic 24 volt air conditioner that we're going to be using has a 4 gauge recommendation from the calculator, but the manufacturer recommends 2 gauge, so we're going to go with that. Same on the Victron 100 amp DC to DC charger that we plan on using. The calculator is recommending 4 gauge to stay at 3% voltage drop, but I'm actually going to round up for the sake of consolidating wire sizes, as I won't be using 4 gauge anywhere else in the build. Now the wire sizes of these last two circuits can be bigger than 10 gauge, as they will not be going to the smaller fuse blocks with the 10 gauge max wire size. They will be going to the, links, the Victron Lynx distributor, down in the same area as the Battleborn battery bank, over the driver's side wheel well. Now that we have the branch circuit rough draft, it's time to move on to the next step where we will actually be cutting the first hole in the van and installing the shore power inlet. And that's coming up next. Now, we hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, it would be awesome if you'd share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. And if this video inspired you to build something, be sure to tag your projects with the Explorus Life tag on Instagram so that we can see and share your projects. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and we will see you in the next video. Yeah.